everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. Today I'm shooting a detailing video on this 240SX I picked up recently. It's an all original car, fantastic shape, but it looks like it's been sitting under a tree for two years. So for this video, I'm gonna be bringing this car back to life. Oh, dude, <laughs> look who it is. Hey guys, Chris Fix here. Let's get that 240 detailed. So I watched Chris fix a super clean video that he did on his drift stain that he's building. Look at these before and after shots. The transformation is incredible. But that's what I wanna do to this 240. I wanna completely transform it and bring it back to life. So Chris Fix and I are gonna focus on the essential tips and tricks necessary because he's already done the in-depth version with his super clean video. We wanna focus on those essential bits so you can know what it takes to bring something like this back to life. So Kyle, tell me the areas that you want to focus on for cleaning this 240. Okay, so because this car has been sitting outside for as long as it has, the paint is pretty faded. There's a lot of spots. I mean, you can see just where dirt's been collecting. There's a lot of mildew. So I think a good compound or a polish and wax would do really nice just to liven it up. And I think it's going to come out looking nice, especially for a 27-year-old car. I mean, it's also kind of funny. There's actually moss growing in the windshield cowl. The glass also has a ton of water spots. You can see the etching, you know, top, bottom, left, and right. Everything needs to be cleaned up, and that's going to improve visibility a lot, especially at night. Across the sides down here, you can see a lot more of the water spots and stuff, and that's where the polish and wax is going to really come in handy. Down below, we obviously want to focus on the wheels. These are the original wheels, 15 inch. They all, you know, very much intact, no paint fading or peeling or anything. So I think those are going to come out really nice. And just to address this in case anybody hasn't seen my last uh, couple project videos, these cars have an inherent issue with their factory spoilers where you know, the clips can rust and stuff. So while it didn't have an issue, it still had some broken clamps, got that taken care of, and that explains the painter's tape. But of course, we wanna give the interior a nice refreshing, focus on the door jams, get it all vacuumed up, you know, clean all the little nooks and crannies and stuff. And being that there's no cracks in the dash or anything, we wanna make sure all of this is UV protected and you know, just to make it a nice environment to sit in. And to do this, we're gonna go in a step-by-step -step fashion. Up top here, we have a lot of the exterior cleaning products, and I wanted to highlight that I'm gonna be using a foam cannon, which is gonna really help with cleaning the exterior, as well as Chris Fix's trademarked soapy water, which is gonna really help as well. Right beneath that, we have our polishes, waxes, to really bring out that shine in the paint. Down below, some of the interior cleaning products and you know tire shine, stuff like that, as necessary, as well as our you know rinse bucket, wash bucket. So I think we're pretty much good to go. What do you think, Chris? Sounds good to me. Yeah, let's, let's do, do it. it. And the first step is to spray down the car to remove any loose dirt. Now you want to be careful when you use a power washer because you don't want to use a narrow beam which could damage the paint. Make sure you use a nice and wide beam. You also want to keep your distance with the power washer. Don't stand too close. Again, it could damage your paint. And finally, when you're cleaning the car off, start from the top and work your way down. This will rinse all the dirt off the top and as you work your way down, you'll be removing more and more dirt and not contaminating the upper surfaces. Shoot, <laughs> I forgot there's a big water leak in the truck. For real? Yeah, I thought it was because of these holes and I patched them up and it didn't help, so it's, it's somewhere else and I haven't figured it out yet. You haven't found a leak? Do you want me to show you how to find the leak? Yeah, let's do it before we spray anything else on. Okay. You sure this is gonna work? <laughs> yeah, trust me. <laughs> You got it? Yeah. Where was it? I think it's coming in from around right here. Oh yeah, you can actually see it dripping down. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So now you know where your leak is. Yep. Yay. Another project. <laughs> Next we're going to go and foam up the car. All we're using in our foam cannon is dish soap and water. You only want to use dish soap when you're super cleaning your car because it strips all the wax from your car. It's also really good at removing road grime, any oils, and dirt. Gravity pulls the thick suds down the car, which pulls any remaining dirt off the surface of the car, without even scrubbing. After the car is all foamed up, now you want to rinse it off. Rinsing all the soap off will remove the contaminants the soap loosened up. So make sure you rinse from the top down. With the car fully rinsed off, now we're going to do our hand wash. Do your best to clean in straight back and forth lines, just in case if you do scratch the car. Straight line scratches are easier to remove than circular scratches. And again, you want to work from top to bottom. 
touching every surface of the car to agitate and remove that dirt in the clear coat and get it nice and clean. So at this point, I like to clean the wheels. Basically, take your product and go all within the wheel wells to make sure you get all the grit and grime that's tossed up in there from the road. Then go ahead and spray a liberal amount all around your tires. And then the same thing with the wheels. This one hasn't been cleaned in quite a while, so there's a lot of brake dust inside. So you're gonna wanna make sure to concentrate it inside the spokes. Once the wheel has been covered, you can let it sit for a few seconds and allow the dirt to dissolve a little bit, it makes things a little bit easier. Of course, you're gonna to wanna to agitate it. For the face, I just like to use a normal terry cloth, but for the inside spokes, being that this one has some caked on brake dust, a simple toothbrush will do the trick. Just a quick note too, I wouldn't use a hard bristle toothbrush on fancier wheels, like especially chrome wheels where you can risk possibly scratching, but these are older obviously. This is a painted surface here with more of a metal finish inside, so it's a perfect application for a toothbrush. Finishing our hand wash, we want to give it one more rinse, and now we could dry it. Now with drying the car, again, you want to use a back and forth motion, not a circular motion, and you want to start from the top and move downwards. Be sure to touch all the surfaces of the car with a light pressure so you're not pushing hard on the paint. And we're using a special thick pile drying microfiber cloth, which not only absorbs the water, but it pulls any dirt that we might have missed away from the paint, so we're not rubbing any dirt or dust into the paint. And with the car completely dry, now we're going to start our polishing. And to give you an idea, we're gonna tape off the front fender here to give you a before and after to see how well the polish works. And what a polish is, is it's a really fine abrasive. You wanna work it into the paint and this will remove that top oxidized layer of the clear coat, hopefully revealing a nice shine. And we'll find out in a second. After you work it in, get a clean microfiber towel and give it a final buff and let's see the condition of this paint. All right, moment of truth, you do the honors. Dang. <laughs> Look at that difference. difference, holy smokes. Wow. And now that's what polish could do for your severely oxidized paint. Look at that difference, that is incredible. And now we just have to do the rest of the car. And polishing takes a while. And by a while, I mean a while. A while. Yeah, <laughs> we had to polish the whole car by hand, and it takes some time but it comes out looking awesome. We're on our last panel right here, and then we'll move to the next step, which is sealing this paint. Now we're gonna apply our sealant in a straight back and forth motion, and work on one panel at a time. Let it haze over for about a minute or two, and then you can buff it off. When you're buffing it off, move in a back and forth motion, and apply moderate pressure to your microfiber towel. Look at that. That looks awesome. It does look awesome. <laughs> oh man. What a transformation. And that sealer is good for about six to eight months depending on if your car is outside and where you live in the country. And that'll provide a nice protective layer and give you this awesome shine. Look at that. Woo! I'm so excited. <laughs> so now let's go ahead and pull it back in the garage and start working on the interior. So this interior is already in great shape, but there's two things that we can do to really take it to the next level. That's giving it a good vacuum and cleaning all the interior panels. And the good thing about the vacuuming, once you remove the debris, you can see if there's any stains that need to be spot cleaned. And look at that, such a simple thing to do and check out the difference. Now that we're done vacuuming, we need to clean the interior panels, but also use a product that adds UV protection. Specifically for this car, the doors and dash are prone to crack because they're wrapped in padded material, so we want to make sure they're all nice and protected with that. The other thing too you want to make sure of is to spray your product on the rag. That prevents everything from going all over your door panels, paint, you know, cloth, and all that kind of stuff. It keeps it nice and contained. And another quick tip, roll down your windows anytime you're cleaning the panels, just so that you don't get any of that cleaner on the glass. It can smell here. So along with wiping down the panels and stuff for hard to reach areas like this, it's definitely nice to get a detailing brush. This one's actually adjustable back and forth, so it depends on how tight of a space you're working with, but you can go in and around through the slats and get it all nice and cleaned out. 
And to finish everything off, you know, the detailing brush is definitely nice because it loosens everything up, but you can take a can of compressed air and blow all of that out. So get all the loose particles out of there and it's nice and fresh. So yeah, that's all it takes. That's our tips and tricks on how to detail your car. And I think it came out awesome. Check out this shine. The interior looks great. Let's go check out some before and after pictures. Sounds good to me. We simply cannot say it more that this transformation is absolutely incredible and it only took a day's worth of work, but we were able to bring so much life back into the car. I hope this video is helpful. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to comment below. And if you haven't checked out Chris Fix's channel, all the links can be found in the description box. Stay tuned guys, there's always a lot more where that came from. Leave a like and subscribe today. Take care. All right, and that finishes the video. Look how good that looks. And one last thing, you've just been Chris Fixed. <laughs>